obviously with mine you just pop it, pull it off. So if someone wanted to disarm me, they just have to pull one bit and pull it off my arm. Hi, I'm Sammy. I am the co-founder of Open Bionics, and Open Bionics is a robotics company in Bristol, England, that makes bionic hands for amputees. We make these 3D printed bionic hands for people who are born without hands and also for people who lose hands. We've been working on the company since around 2014, and I'm really excited to be here today. So thanks for having me. Hey guys, my name is Dan. I am an ambassador for the company Open Bionics and I've been a tester for the last six odd years and I'm here today to watch some really cool clips of the Winter Soldier because I'm a big fan and also show you guys what may be possible in the future and what you can't unfortunately do right now, but you know, it's great to be here. I feel like anatomical knowledge missing here because even if his bionic arm could hold onto the road, he would rip his other limb clean off mm. that's holding onto the lorry. <laughs> well, my first thought was if I put my hand down, my immediate reaction was like the hand would just break, it would just scrape across the road and it would just disappear. We need a bionic arm made of vibranium in real mm. life. The most advanced bionic arm available is made of metals and that makes it super heavy. So vibranium, I think, is meant to be super lightweight. Our friend would be like, kind of like lopsided and tired most of the time from carrying the weight of his uh, bionic arm. If I was to put this on the ground while holding on like he was, it would just start melting and grinding and probably eventually just come off. It's interesting, the interface between the human and the machine, like Dan's prosthesis, the hero arm, for example, slips on and off. Uh, you can tighten it and it's made, it's completely bespoke for the person wearing it, um, but it's not like fused to the body that's kind of like a state-of-the-art research that's really young technology that we're still learning a lot about. Our Marvel friend doesn't seem to have that problem. <laughs> do you think you would do it, Dan? You would think you'd have the surgery to, to have the implant? For me personally, I think I didn't, because I didn't lose my arm, I was born like it. It makes this situation for me slightly different. I think if I lost my arm, I'd probably end up having the rest of it amputated and actually welded in, in a way. But whereas because I have what I have of my arm, I probably personally wouldn't, but even then, I think, I don't know. I don't know if I want to give up my body, the, the body parts I have. Some people would, me personally, probably not. Can you imagine that, Dan? Like you're scraping your arm along the floor trying to hold on for dear life. And then you just have all of your vibration sensors kicking off. So your oh. arm's like vibration, vibrating uncontrollably because you're getting all of that feedback from the child. Yeah, there's pros and cons <laughs> of that situation, I guess, isn't there actually? I was thinking, I was like, oh, sometimes it's great not to feel pain with the arm, but then obviously I want to be able to feel things, but that is something I'd never want to, never want to feel. It gave me very Adam Jensen-y vibes from Deus Ex for a while because that first thing when he punches through the wall, I was like, I remember all the years of being asked, can I punch through a wall? And my answer is no, I can't punch through a wall. And if I could, I think everyone would want a bionic arm. But I've tried to punch through a wall. I would not only break the hand, but I'd probably actually break what bone I have in here as well if I <laughs> really punched it. So guarantee it will not work like that. Not gonna happen. Also, one of the most requested abilities or features that we get all of the time from gamers is like, can you please make a bionic hand that can punch through a wall? What is the usefulness of that? Like, <laughs> this is making bionic technologies a really hard engineering challenge. You need to make a device that's super comfortable, really lightweight, it has to be worn daily. Like, if you're gonna add massive motors um, and if you're gonna use really robust, heavy, super heavy materials that can smash through walls, how often are you going to want to wear that on the end of your arm? Not very often. It's really interesting because the, the request always comes from people with two hands. It's always, there's this like aspirational goal by people with two hands to have a bionic limb that can do really destructive things like smashing through walls. And we, we don't get the question ever from a user, someone who would wear the hero arm. Like, no one has ever come to us and asked, can you make a bionic hand that can punch through a wall that is going to wear the hero arm? The, the request that we get is like, can you make a bionic arm that's really light so I can wear it all the time? Or can you make a bionic arm that can lift up the shopping from the super supermarket shop? Or can you make a bionic hand that can hold my knife really powerfully so I can be confident when I'm eating out in a restaurant. So there's a quite a big chasm between what gamers think that they want Bionic Hands to do and actually where we are in industry. From what Sammy is saying as well, gamers 
especially two-handed gamers or people with two hands who have seen the clips and stuff, they they don't seem to ever distinguish the difference between what is real and what's fake. And sometimes they just assume that that's just because that's on a video game or a film or something that maybe it could be done, but we're talking far, far in the future. We're so far away from that being a priority to build into Bionic Limbs. Like, if you look at the character's arm, the functionality that is really most impressive is being able to have like this degree of freedom and this level of control. Like we don't even have the basics of that arm in reality yet. It's really nice and aspirational, but there isn't a bionic arm available that can have this movement that, that humans have and that this character has. So that's still like bionic goals. Why didn't you use the metal arm? Well, I don't always think of it immediately. I'm right-handed. Oh, I love that scene. That hits That's home. a bit like you. That hits home for me a yeah. lot. I grew up uh, using my left hand and I found out I was dominantly right-handed because growing up, I was constantly trying to do everything right-handed and everyone's like, sorry, Dan, you can't do that. But through the years, I know I have to use my left hand. So I sometimes just, my immediate reaction, even if I'm wearing this, like, I don't know, to pick up some tweezers, I, I would pick them up with this. I wouldn't go, oh yeah, I just used that my, my bionic arm. Sometimes my first thought is to use my actual arm. Do you remember when you started drawing, it actually felt way more natural for you to draw mm -hmm. with your right hand, even though it was bionic? Yeah, it was. It was a bit surreal because growing up, I've been into art and stuff like that. And um, I, it was a joke at first, but then I was like, actually, I'm going to keep doing this. So I did some drawings with this arm and I just found it really natural. OK, they're not the best drawings, but they're still not bad for someone who has never drawn before. And also with a bionic arm. So Bucky's response there and reaction there is like the holy grail within the prosthetics industry. Like you want the person who is wearing the bionic arm to feel completely at home and at one with the device like the bionic arms and bionic technology and bionic prosthetics they're all tools that are used to like increase your independence or your mobility they're there to be helpful they're helpful aids but sometimes and quite a lot of the times actually that we found with hero arm users is that the adoption of the technology is so fast like the bionic arm the hero arm is a piece of wearable technology, a bit like a, a smartwatch or a Fitbit or something, like it's there to aid you and you wear it on your body every single day. The feedback we get a lot of the time is that the device feels like it's part of their body and they feel an intense like connection to the device and they feel an, an intense protectiveness over the device. So even if someone sends in their bionic arm to us for maintenance, they want updates like all of the time they want to check on their device, make sure that we're not like swapping out parts without them knowing because each bit of the component tree is really important to them. Um, it's like, it is literally their body part now. So that scene was really nice because it sums up what we all want within the industry. Everyone wants to build devices that are loved and that become part of the person. Doesn't seem terribly robust, <laughs> the interface between uh, the arm and body. What do you think, Dan? Well, I was thinking um, when I first saw that clip, when I first watched the show anyway, I was thinking, um, wow, that cut does come off easily, but you have to do it in a certain way with obviously with mine, you just pop it, pull it off. So if someone wanted to disarm me, they just have to pull one bit and pull off my arm. So I try not to annoy my girlfriend too often. It did seem incredibly simple. Um, and why? So it gets sliced up and it will fall to the floor really quickly, but it's actually not broken at all and he can just put it back on and it fits in. It's, it is very similar to the kind of like Luke Darkwa arm, isn't it? That's kind of the closest comparison I would say that we have today. The Luke arm by Darkwa is, is like the only above elbow bionic arm where you can control the elbow, the wrist and the fingers using sensors that are embedded and it's and it's, you can take it off in a similar fashion and put it back on. So that is quite similar. But again, the Luke arm, which costs millions of pounds to develop, doesn't have a sense of feedback, a sense of touch. It's not nearly as advanced as the arm here. One of the biggest challenges with bionic technology is the form factor. So you have to fit in all of the motors, the PCB, the battery, pretty much everything within the size of the human hand. And it's an awful lot of technology to fit in such a small space. And that's one of the greatest engineering challenges. It's like, how can you build the most advanced system that can replicate all of these incredible movements without adding a ton of weight or a ton of bulk?
I was feeling nervous for the electronics engineers <laughs> when it got fried. It's like, oh, well, that's the PCB gone. Yeah, it seems to have sorted itself out. It, it just started working again. You never see Bucky charge it or anything. It just works. Whereas someone like me, my battery's in here, I gotta pop it out, charge it. And if it unfortunately gets broken or fried or something happens, I can replace it. But that's so, I did not think until this point, never thought about that Bucky's got a bionic arm and he doesn't, no one explains how he charges it. It's just charged. So maybe he has like some kind of solar panel skin on top of the vib vibranium. If you were to fall on your bionic arm and you manage to pierce if you if you fell on something really spiky and you pierce the battery, the battery needs to be robust enough to not explode. It needs to be safe enough for adults and children to wear. So the constraints of re reality around power source is deeply felt. <laughs> yeah, I would love to know what they're working with in, in their lab. If the battery was damaged on my arm, my immediate reaction would be lob the arm and the back. You know, if I was really damaged like it was just then, I'd probably lob my arm across the room because I would ex I would be slightly worried that it may explode from the damages, to be honest with you. you know? It's a really interesting point. I've actually never ever thought through, there are so many great bionic arms in science fiction. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about all of these different bionic arms and what they can do and why they've chosen the features that they've chosen and the look that they've chosen, but never ever is it discussed how these things are powered. There is something about bionic arms in every single movie that is really empowering. And for, for Winter Soldier, the, the empowerment comes from his super strength. It gives him so much strength. Prosthetic arms are a source of strength for the people that wear them, whether that's like just from being able to do more activities or from the empowerment that they get of having a bionic arm. For this, I do feel awesome wearing it. Yeah, if I was a kid watching this, I'd be like, I still want to be the Winter Soldier. He's so cool, even though he's really violent, you know? You guys ever want to make a Winter Soldier arm? Well, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> Marvel! Yeah. Hey. Please! <laughs> If you want to see even more IGN experts' reaction, why not check out these videos? 